Welcome to the scanner navigation training class for the ProLink Ultra by Snap-on. This class assumes that the user has some experience in heavy duty vehicle diagnostics and just needs to know how to operate their new ProLink Ultra. We're going to begin by learning how to connect the scan tool to the truck. After you've registered your ProLink Ultra and registered the software, you can begin using it to scan heavy duty vehicles. The first step will be to locate the diagnostic connector on the truck and then to identify whether it is a 6 pin or a 9 pin connector. You can easily see that this vehicle has a 9 pin connector, so choose the appropriate adapter for the end of the ProLink Ultra and connect it to the vehicle. On the top of the ProLink Ultra, on the left side, is the power button. Locate it and push it in order to turn the unit on. Once you push the power button, the scan tool will begin to fire up and will boot to the home screen. Once you're at the home screen, you are ready to start using your ProLink Ultra to scan heavy-duty vehicles. Anytime you're using the 6 or 9 pin adapter, simply touch HD Scan in order to start scanning your heavy-duty vehicle. Your ProLink Ultra will start scanning the data bus and automatically identify any computers that it finds. The ProLink Ultra will display all of the computers that it finds present on the data bus. You can select up to six modules to load at one time. On this vehicle, we're going to load the software for Navistar MaxForce and Bendix ABS by touching them to highlight them and then clicking the OK button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. As soon as we click the OK button, the ProLink Ultra will begin to scan those modules. As it does, a check mark will appear by each one as it pulls the trouble codes and then automatically advances to a trouble code screen. The trouble codes menu will automatically appear. You can see on the left hand side is active trouble codes and that's anything that's broken right now. On the right hand side is inactive codes. These are history codes and you can see that this vehicle has three history codes stored. You can get additional information on any trouble code by touching it in order to open it. If you don't have a Repair Connect subscription, the following additional information is available. The first is code description. It tells you which system is having a problem. In this case, the EGR valve. Next is FMI or Failure Mode Indicator. It tells you specifically what it doesn't like. In this case, it says mechanical system not responding. It sounds like it might be stuck. The computer in the truck will also report the number of occurrences. In this case, it says it's zero. And this is odd about heavy duty trucks. Occurrences start at zero instead of one. So if it says occurrence is zero, it happened one time. If it says occurrence is one, it actually happened twice, and so on. Also available without a Repair Connect subscription, can be a freeze frame if the vehicle happens to store it. In this case, we have some snapshot information from when the trouble code occurred. We can see that the engine was 700 RPMs, engine load was 36%, and the engine was about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Freeze frames can be really helpful for diagnostics. They let the technician know exactly what was going on when the trouble code occurred. Was the engine hot or cold, full throttle, part throttle, what was the engine load, how many miles were on it? All this information can be really helpful on tough to diagnose problems. This concludes our video on navigating the trouble codes menu with your Snap-on ProLink Ultra. If your ProLink Ultra is connected to the internet and you have a Repair Connect subscription, you can access much more detailed engine diagnostic information. This is not coverage for automatic transmission or for anti-lock brakes, it's engine only. We're going to run through some of that coverage now. This additional diagnostic information is divided into four groups. The first is testing. The next is specifications. The third is wiring diagrams and component locators, and lastly, removal and installation procedures. Under the testing tab, you're going to find several choices. You see here we have two trouble code flowcharts and also two individual component tests. 
If we wanted to go just test the fuel rail pressure sensor, we can click on a component test, but I've got a trouble code, so I want to follow a diagnostic flowchart. So I'm going to click on the fuel rail pressure sensor test, and it's going to open up a diagnostic flowchart for this code. Now it doesn't make sense for me to read this entire flowchart for a training video, but you can see here it gives you some diagnostic information where it tells you to uh, open up your scanner software, find the continuous monitor test, test all of your sensor voltages, and then you'll see as you scroll down that you can do like the smartphone scroll, so touch and drag down through these screens, and now you can see it gives us voltages for all of our individual pins, uh, and then voltage specs, uh, resistance specs, and anything else you might need in order to complete the tests in this flowchart. To navigate back to the test menu, click the green arrow on the bottom left hand corner of the screen. If you want to navigate back to your trouble codes menu, click on the faults tab on the top right hand corner of the screen. Next is the specifications tab, and this is a handy reference. In here will be voltage, resistance, amperage, and even torque specs that are related to this trouble code. The next menu on the list is wiring diagrams and component locators. This is some handy information to have right at the fender. Let's run through the rest of these menus. The first one is complete system wiring diagrams. Notice that there are multiple ones here. When you click on this menu, give it a second to load and complete system wiring diagrams will appear. You are able to zoom in and zoom out as well as print these to a wireless printer. Next is a wiring diagram for just the fuel rail pressure sensor. So rather than trying to find it on a large wiring diagram, these are just the individual components right here. Now we come to connector views. Here you can see one for our engine control models. When you click this, and again give it a second to load, you'll see an end view of the PCM connector as well as pin locations. And here's a connector view of just the fuel rail pressure sensor. Again, click it and give it a second to load and you'll see a nice photograph of the end view of the fuel rail pressure sensor and all of the pins are labeled. Last but certainly not least in this menu is individual component locations. So I'm going to touch this one for the fuel rail pressure sensor and it will load a photograph of the side of the engine and point to where the fuel rail pressure sensor is located. You'll see a button on the bottom that says view full screen. If you touch that and again give it another moment to load, it will take advantage of the full screen of your ProLake Ultra and still you can zoom and move around this image and print it if needed. The final item to talk about in the codes menu is the removal and installation menu. If you click on that, you'll see removal and installation procedures for all the components involved in this particular code. In this case, the fuel rail pressure sensor and the ECM. If you click on either one of those, in this case I'm going to click on the fuel rail pressure sensor, it's going to give you removal and installation procedures for that individual component. In order to return to the trouble code menu, click on the faults tab at the top right hand corner and you'll return to the main menu of the ProLink Ultra. You see here now you can navigate to other menus from data, engine data, brake data, calibrations, and functional tests. So this concludes our training video of trouble code menu navigation and repair connect navigation. Like any software driven tool, the only way you're going to truly learn to navigate this tool is by picking it up and using it. No training video is going to give you that experience. So be sure to play with your scan tool on a good working vehicle in order to learn how to navigate find your way around the menus before you're working on a frustrating diagnostic problem. Now that we're done navigating the codes menu, we're going to move on to the data menus. You're going to do that by clicking on the large tabs on the right hand side. So if you want break data, click the break data tab on the right hand side and then choose the sub menu that will appear on the left hand side. In this case we choose data list and you'll see wheel speed sensors appear now for live data. You can see on this vehicle we have six wheel speed sensors. Uh, that's because it's a tandem dump truck 
and we can monitor all these wheel speed sensors as we drive the vehicle. In this case, however, I don't want brake data. I want engine data because I have a low fuel pressure code. So I'm going to choose the engine data tab on the right hand side and then I'm going to choose the correct submenu on the left hand side. And it's tough to know where any particular piece of data is going to be located so until you get used to using the scan tool you're going to just have to search around. In this case I know fuel delivery pressure is either going to be under my fuel systems menu or first I'm just going to try my general engine menu. Page one of my general engine data list appears and I don't see fuel delivery pressure on this menu however there's a page two. So on the bottom right hand corner of your ProLink Ultra click on page two and it will advance the second page of the data list and then sure enough there's fuel delivery pressure right in the middle of the page. So if I was actually going to be diagnosed in this vehicle I would probably head out on a road test and put this vehicle under, under load, maybe find a hill or two and see if we couldn't deliver decent fuel pressure while we were driving down the road. Now the spec for this truck is 90 PSI so 1.74 PSI is a long ways off of that but uh, remember we we're just key on engine off at this point. Now there are lots of other data menus to explore. If you click on the view categories button on the bottom left hand side of your ProLink IQ you'll see that it changes the data lists that are available on the left hand side. So click those in order to find new menus and then click on those submenus in order to open them up. So you see here we found our fuel systems menu and in it you'll find plenty of fuel related data. Notice starting at the bottom is fuel pulse width, so that's injector pulse width. Fuel delivery pressure, and notice that one's listed again. Not only was it in the general engine data, but also here as well. And you'll see that there is some redundancy in the PIDs. Above that is ETP desired engine throttle position. Uh, and then above it is uh, uh, actual throttle position. And then above that is the CTL offset is throttle angle error. So you can see some of the data will get, uh, will get quite in depth. A handy feature of the ProLink Ultra is being able to build custom data lists inside your data menus. Uh, these are called quick lists. You'll build them by touching the open boxes to the left side of any PID you wish to see on a separate screen. As you touch the box, a small check mark will appear there. Then click the View Quick List button at the top left hand corner of the screen and it will display just the PIDs that you selected. So notice the data we've selected here with our custom data list. I have my diesel oxidation catalyst inlet temp, DPF inlet temp, and DPF outlet temp along with soot loading. So if I wanted to watch either a passive or an active regen take place, I'd be able to see that happening through all of my exhaust gas temperature sensors. Another handy feature of the ProLink Ultra is being able to graph data. It's easy to do so. Just bring up the data that you'd like to see and click Graph Page on the bottom left hand corner. The data that you are watching will appear digitally on the left hand side of the screen and on the right hand side of the screen color graphs will appear. In order to see any color graph in detail, click it on the left hand side. It will put that particular graph in bold and also edge a digital number to the right hand side. In order to read all the data on your ProLink Ultra, you're going to need to know one more thing. Notice on this screen where we have a list of after treatment regen inhibitors. This data will tell you why your truck won't go into regen. So know it says AFT regen inhibit, accelerate, dot, dot, dot. And the next line is AFT regen inhibit, clutch, dot, dot, dot. And then it says inhibited or not inhibited. If you want to see what all of these mean, you will actually have to touch and hold a particular PID and then the rest of the data will appear. So you can see that this one is after treatment regen inhibited due to the engine not warmed up. Now on this vehicle, that's not a big deal. We've looked at engine temp and we've also looked at our exhaust gas temperatures and we know that this is a cold engine. However, if you had a truck that wouldn't do a regen because your foot was on the service brake, that would be some handy information to know. This concludes our video on ProLake Ultra data. Unlike any other vehicles in the automotive industry, heavy duty trucks are capable of calibration changes, meaning we can do things like change the top engine RPM or the top vehicle speed. In order to access these changes, click on the calibrations tab. 
This tab is available from any other menu. You can see we're going to access this cal the calibrations tab from the engine data menu. So we're going to click on that tab now in order to load the calibration screen. After touching the calibrations tab, on the left hand side will appear any computers that happen to have been ID'd for this particular scan. So on this truck we ID'd engine and anti-lock brakes and those are the modules that appear. Also notice that they say Bendix and Max Force. If we ID'd either one of these modules through heavy duty standard they would appear but no calibrations would be available. Calibrations are only available when we have OEM style software loaded. When we choose the engine calibrations tab on the top left hand corner of the screen it will load the engine cals. Starting at the bottom of the screen you can see we can change uh, a governed engine RPM with the engine speed control, also add an idle shutdown timer among others. You can also click the next page which is what we're going to do to see what other calibrations are available. On page two of the calibrations tab for the engines you can see road speed limiting and that's a very common limiter so that's the one we're going to change today so we touch road speed limiting in order to open this menu. The road speed menu has several choices. You can see on top road speed limiting control mode and it's enabled. This can be turned on and off if you simply don't want a vehicle speed governor you can turn road speed limiting off. There's also engine speed limit with a VSS fault so this is if the VSS reads zero how fast can the engine rev and the one that we're going to mess with on the bottom is maximum vehicle road speed and it is currently set for 67 miles per hour. We're going to touch on it to open it. Once we've opened the menu we see that the current value is 67 miles per hour and that we can punch in a new number anywhere between 1 and 128 miles per hour. Now that's kind of funny because we might not have the engine horsepower or the gear to get that fast but the truck is programmable within that range. Also on the bottom is the tattletale to let you know how many times someone has made this adjustment. So if you touch on the box, you, a keyboard will appear and we can punch in our new number. And so we put in 57 miles per hour and then click update in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. After we click update, it returns us to the road speed menu. You can see that our max road speed now is 10 miles an hour less at 57 miles per hour. And in order to make this program stick on this particular truck, we're going to have to hit the program button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. At this point, if the vehicle requires a password, a box will open up and we'll have to punch that password in in order to proceed. Let's look at one more calibration before we leave this menu. So we're going to advance to page two and on the very bottom of the screen you'll see engine fan control. We're going to click on that to open it. And you see here we can change the time that the, or the temperature rather that the fan can turn on and turn off. And right now the fan turns off at 204 degrees but I want to change that to keep it from short cycling. So we're going to change it to 195. So we punch 195 in the box and now you see my fan will turn on at 212 and turn off at 195. Bendix brakes also allows some calibrations. You can see from this menu we can do some system configuration changes as well as tire configuration changes. In the system config menu we can change the number of sensors and modulators that are going to be used on this particular truck. For tire sizes, it allows us to change the revolutions per mile. So if we were to change tire size on a particular vehicle, we can make those changes in the anti-lock brake system in order for it to continue functioning properly. This concludes our segment on the calibration menu inside your Snap-on ProLink Ultra. The last menu we're going to navigate on the ProLink Ultra is the tests menu. This is where we're going to go to perform bi-directional controls like injector rattle tests, ABS solenoid tests, and so on. You can access it like any other menu by finding it on the right hand side on your list of tabs and clicking on it. As soon as you click on the tabs button, a warning screen will appear. This is basically some precautions. Set the park and brake, make sure you know what you're doing, don't play in traffic, and so on. The tests that appear in these menus are going to vary widely from manufacturer to manufacturer because no two truck manufacturers or engine manufacturers will have the same list of tests for their vehicles. There will be some standardized things like injector rattle tests and commanding regens, 
uh, but uh, but other than that, the uh, the tests in here will vary widely. So you won't know what tests you can run until you come in here and open these menus. You can see here that we have key on engine off, some engine running tests, and some after treatment tests. You can see here our choices are key on engine off, engine running tests, uh, as well as after treatment tests for commander regens. If we click on key on engine off, it'll load another menu. So you see we have a key on engine off standard test, uh, an injector rattle test. Near the bottom, we have a relative compression test, uh, along with uh, output state high and low tests. Under the engine running test menu, you'll find key on engine running standard test. By the way, that's a great test to check to see if your, uh, your EGR repair was successful. Then we've got a cylinder cutout. That's an injector. Uh, an injector cutout test and then uh, on the bottom is an air management test. On this truck in the air management test you'll find a mass airflow sensor calibration for when you replace the mass airflow sensor on this vehicle and you'll also find uh, onboard filter cleanliness and this is where you go to command a regen on this truck. ABS systems also allow for some bi-directional controls so if we chose Bendix brakes instead of engine you see we can find some cycle tests we have cycle test one and two, then we choose the axle on which we want this test to run. When you click start, it will run an ABS solenoid rattle check. And if you put air to it, if you put your foot on the brake, you will actually hear the isolation of the dump valve cycling and letting air in and out of the ABS valves. The very last button we have to talk about is the menu button and if you click on the top left hand corner of the screen you'll see a button that says end session and when you want to disconnect your ProLink Ultra from a vehicle you're going to have to go to the menu click end session wait for it to return to the home screen which means you stop communication with the vehicle and at that point it is safe to shut the key off and then unplug the scan tool and then you're done Thank you for watching our series of training videos for the Snap-on ProLink Ultra. Like any software-driven device, there are lots and lots of button pushes and lots and lots of menus. When you connect this scan tool to a different vehicle, different menus are going to appear. So the only way you're going to truly learn this scan tool is by picking it up and using it. Thankfully, this scan tool is very easy to navigate, and you shouldn't have any trouble from here navigating it on your own. So thank you again and have a good day.